Hello and welcome to The Skinnery and You. My name is Fen and I'm going to be your host for this deep dive into sections of Kingdom Death Monster. In this particular video, we're going to be talking about the Skinnery, which you see on screen right here. The Skinnery is one of the earliest settlement locations you're going to craft. It is a tier one settlement location in that you make it directly from the Lantern Hall, which you can see right here. It costs one endeavor and nothing else. So that's a pretty cheap resource cost. Just for those people who uh, want to understand my thinking and philosophy behind endeavors, I consider endeavors to be a resource that can actually be converted directly into population or into gear. So they are a resource every bit as much as the others. It helps you evaluate things better when you know, when you consider them to be a resource. The Skinnery, on the other hand, uses hide as its primary resource. Whether it be monster hide like this, which is a basic hide, or even monster specific hide like this from the White Lion, as long as it has this little keyword right here, then it is hide. And it can be used for anything where it just says hide here. A quick note on the relative values of resources. Hide is about five times more valuable than bone and four to five times more valuable than organs. The reason for that is in Kingdom Death, armor takes five items to build a complete set and that covers all of your hit locations on your survivor. So you're typically going to want five hide for, a, for all of your armor in the early game and then one bone to construct a weapon it might not necessarily be a monster bone, but you can build a bone sword or bone dance with a monster bone here. And then organs sit between the two in value because the remaining three slots you have in your gear grid will usually require organs to construct those given items. But we'll talk about weapons and, uh, and items in the future. So let's get back to the skinnery and We'll look at the options on here and then we'll take a deep dive into the pieces of gear. First of all, you can see that every piece of raw hide armor costs one hide to construct. That means a full set is five hide, hence we get the five to one ratio that I talked about previously in regards to value. It also has three other options down here, two items and one weapon. So this makes it, as in, sorry, this makes the skinnery one of the few early game locations that covers weapons, utility items, and armor in a single slot. So the skinnery is something you're probably gonna to want to unlock fairly early. However, you can't get access to the rawhide drum without having innovated drums. We're gonna talk about drums in the future uh, when I talk about innovations, but just to briefly note, drums is really good. Uh, it is a language consequence, so you have potential access to it from the very start of the game. And this here, these two fighting arts are really good. Now the Rawhide Whip, on the other hand, requires ammonia. Ammonia is also used for crafting leather. It is, again, a language consequence innovation. But your goal with ammonia isn't to innovate it, if you can avoid that. Innovating is expensive, it's four resources to innovate and you don't have a huge amount of control over what you get unless you have symposium. So there are other ways of getting ammonia. When hunting white lions, sometimes on the hunt you will unlock ammonia for free. When fighting Gorms, sometimes you would also unlock ammonia for free. So one of the early game goals you're going to have is hunting white lions and or Gorms to try and unlock ammonia for free. Because every time you get a free innovation, it is really strong. And the Rawhide Whip needs ammonia. Last thing we have on the actual settlement card itself is this here. This means we can use a skinnery to construct the leather worker. It costs three hide and an organ. This is a pretty average cost for unlocking a new settlement location off a previous one. Leather's very good, we'll talk about that in a future video, but for now um, I'm just going to say you're not going to look at unlocking the leather worker until you have ammonia and you have between two and three sets of rawhide and bandages. 
So this is the actual settlement location itself and the other bits and pieces that are associated with it. What we're going to do now is we're going to go take a look at the gear cards that you can make from it. So here we go. This is all of the cards that can be crafted from the skinnery. We're going to start over here at this end uh, with these three items here. So the rawhide headband in the center is one of the most powerful items in the entire game. It is also one of the most cost efficient. Your first rawhide headband that you make, you're going to use it on every single showdown for the rest of the entire campaign. This is because of its unique ability that it has here, um, which we'll discuss in a moment. But first of all, you can see it gives you one armor to your head. Protecting your head is really important in Kingdom Death because your head is more likely to get specifically targeted by certain headhunter actions. So it, it's less random when your head gets hit at times, but more importantly, your head only has one natural hit points that it can take and that's a heavy blow so it will knock you down and then you're on to taking severe injuries. Severe head injuries have a bunch of terrible effects that can really cripple a survivor including blind and similar but the one that you really need to consider and think about is 40% of the time a head severe injury will just kill a survivor outright. Having armor on your head, this here just, just a rawhide headband, doubles the amount of protection that your head has. That's big and it triples it once you get a full set of rawhide sorted out. We'll talk about the set bonus in a moment. The bottom though, this is the real winner. This is the single best thing that rawhide armor does and it is what we call a deck scouting ability. So as long as you have this blue affinity connected to another blue affinity like say this one here, you will unlock this ability via this puzzle affinity, which allows you to spend an activation to reveal the top two AI cards and you put them back on top of the deck in any order. I cannot understate how powerful this actually is. There's a bunch of different things that you can use this for. The most basic and straightforward one is at the final survivor's action for your part of the turn, you have them activate the rawhide headband and you get to look at the monster's top two AI decks, AI deck cards and pick the one that is most beneficial for you, either ensuring that it's going to target the survivor you want it to target or avoid something very dangerous. Say all of your survivors do not have any insanity, so they have no protection at all for their brains right now you don't want it doing an intimidate that's going to affect everyone and knock everyone down. In other words, the rawhide headband lets you curate your, uh, your opponent and dictate their actions to a certain degree. And they can't do anything about this to stop it, so that's fantastic. But it also has a second application, and that's the reason why often you'll find people crafting multiple rawhide headbands. You can use it for deck pruning. So in Kingdom Death, when a monster takes a wound, you remove the top card of the AI deck from it and put it off in the wound pile. That removes the behavior from the monster. It's not going to be doing that when you get on a second lap through its AI deck. It can't do it. So, because you've stopped it, you've removed it, it's injured, it's not going to perform that move. If you use the rawhide headband before someone attacks, you can look at both cards and put the one you really want to get rid of on the top of the deck and then when attacking you've got a higher chance of removing that move and leaving the more desirable one underneath so this is a very proactive way of handling the monster all round and as i said very little else in the game does this so your first rawhide headband is going to go the distance it is one of the best investments for hide you can possibly get spending one hide to get this is amazing then on here over here we have the rawhide gloves very straightforward. They have this little red affinity, which is uh, decent, but uh, uh, it does have some alternatives initially, uh, and it gives you survival when departing. So to start with, your survival limit's going to be two. What that means is when you depart, this is going to provide half of the survival you need all by itself, 
limiting and uh, the need for well, limiting the need to get other ways of gaining survival when departing. It's nice to get more survival when departing, but getting up to a max to your max of two is good enough for most early game fights. Then over here we have the Rawhide Vest. Now the Rawhide Vest has a rather neat little ability, um, which is very powerful. If you connect this and this, which you can do here or here, or you can use many of the weapons you'll get from the Bonesmith to connect this, then you get plus one evasion. Most monsters hit on a two plus, sometimes a three plus. Plus one evasion doubles the chances they're gonna miss. They go from a 10% to a 20% but also evasion stacks. So every point of evasion you put on a survivor, either through the Rawhide Vest or through Survivor of the Fittest or via Monster Grease or via standing in tall grass, reduces the chances the monster's going to hit that particular survivor. And if you keep the monster's focus on that survivor and have them missing, then the survivor doesn't have to dodge as much and it can tank all of the aggro from the monster on behalf of your other survivors who are doing other things really powerful another reason this is absolutely fantastic then we have the rawhide boots over here they are a slightly worse version of rawhide gloves for two reasons number one no affinity yeah lack of affinity is fair but doesn't have it number two leg injuries tend to be less lethal than arm injuries also losing a leg doesn't stop you being able to use two-handed weapons so if you're wielding spears or um Grand weapons in particular, they usually require two hands to use and there aren't many one-handed options so you'll want to protect your arms ahead of protecting your feet. And the last thing is rawhide pants. So rawhide pants by themselves are just a side grade from cloth. Very often you'll go out on a hunt while you're still building your kits together and you'll go like headband, vest, gloves, boots, and then have the cloth in the armor. But you are gonna to want to craft the rawhide pants so you can get access to the set bonus, which let's go take a look at right now. A complete set of rawhide armor will unlock this completed set bonus. It adds one armor to all hit locations, doubling your protection on, on armor protection on every location. Uh, really good for the head, getting three hit points on it, and then armor points, hit points, and then also every other location, effectively having to take four hits before you go to severe injuries, absolutely fantastic. But on top of that, it has this incredible ability, which gives you a refund half the time when you spend survival on survival actions. The way you can think of that is you effectively have, on average, 50% more survival if you're just going to do survival actions. That means just at two survival, that's an extra dodge or an extra encourage. So it's really very, very powerful and it is just a superb armor set. It does almost everything you want and this survival action refund is really good for support survivors who are looking to control the monster and help the other survivors and archers who don't mind the lower armor value because they're further away from the monster. Right. Uh, now let's go look at the last three of our crafting options. First of all we have bandages. One hide to construct bandages that have not one but two good affinities. This connects to the leather shield, this connects to the lucky charm, but also this item gives you a ability that just is good for the whole game. Removing two bleeding tokens from yourself or an adjacent survivor is absolutely fantastic and it will put you in good stead for survival against a whole load of situations where the monster might just bleed you out otherwise. Really powerful. The first set of bandages is a must craft. I would class it as something you want to get before the butcher turns up. Ideally you complete one or two rawhide armor sets before you build the bandages but if you are facing that butcher coming it is worth skipping on a second armor set of rawhide or even like completing your first set just to get these bandages because of how bleed orientated the butcher is. Then we have the rawhide drum. So this is a instrument and it's noisy. We got to talk about noisy for a moment here. Noisy is what I call a negatrait. These are keywords or sometimes abilities that are destructive and harmful either to the item itself or to the survivor using it. <clears throat> Noisy 
is a negatrait for the survivor. You see, when you go on a hunt, you have to roll on the basic hunt event table. And let's go over here and just click on this and take a quick look at this page here, right? So you roll a D100 and 1% of the time you can roll this hunt event here. And that is not just once a hunt, that is every time you draw a basic hunt event. You'll see underneath, this event cannot be rerolled or avoided in any way. So no survival of the fittest rerolls, no way of avoiding this happening, it is going to occur. Now for normal survivors who encounter this, they gain a random disorder and they must spend a survival or they're dead. If you have noisy gear, you are instantly devoured with no chance of avoiding it. So taking noisy gear on a hunt is really, really risky. It's the same with a particular disorder we're going to look at in a moment. And also, you do not get any benefits of your death principle, so you don't even get that little refund for having had a bad experience. Now, I don't think it is unfair to explain why losing a survivor on the hunt is really bad. The game is balanced for four versus one. And Mm, the monster's trying to reduce the numbers, so you may win some showdowns with three or even two versus one, or perhaps an epic one versus one final thing. But going into the showdown at the start, missing an entire survivor is an absolute nightmare. We really just cannot afford to do it at all. It is horrifically bad news. So, going on a hunt with drums, especially if you're playing four player, is asking for one person to have to sit at the table and do absolutely nothing for the whole showdown phase except maybe control the monster. That's not fun for that person who's come along. It sucks. Uh, it's a little better if you're playing with three players, but you're still suffering from being down an entire unit during the showdown. There is, however, an area where you can use instruments. So this isn't a do not craft. This is a think about it and decide if it's right for you. So first of all, you can get a promotional piece of gear, a pattern piece of gear from the Christmas Lucy called the Grim Muffler. It will allow you to ignore one copy of Noisy on your gear grid. So that is one way to get to take the drums out and gain benefit of these two pretty useful abilities, which is first of all, on arrival, you gain plus one insanity, great. And whenever you encourage, all non-deaf survivors are affected, which is also good because there are some fighting arts and other bits and pieces that trigger on encourages. So that is, extra benefits. The other place where you can use instruments and noisy things is when you are hunting or fighting nemesis monsters. They skip the hunt step, they go straight to a showdown. You can always bring instruments along for those showdowns with no worries about being killed. So that's really good. Uh, and if we just exit this and pop over to the board, I'm going to show you this. This is the other edge case where you might use instruments. If you have coprolalia, um, also, you know, referred to as uh, Tourette's at times, um, then all your stuff's always noisy anyway. So having more noisy drums doesn't make the situation any work, any worse. Personally, if I can avoid it, I wouldn't bring along a Coprolalia survivor at all because it's it's easy-ish to get rid of them. But there may be a situation where that becomes the kind of thing you're looking to do. Okay, and then we have finally our last piece of rawhide gear to discuss. This is the rawhide whip. So it is the only weapon in the skinnery. Uh, it is a whip, um, which means it can give you access to whip specialization and mastery, but if you decide to work in it. And it has this attack profile, which is three speed, seven plus to hit, and one strength. So three speed, seven plus to hit is actually an okay profile. I prefer two and six, but three and seven is okay. It's a little more wild. Um, and it can be very frightening when you roll all three hits, but it's manageable as long as you have enough strength. This is the downside of the Rawhide Whip, is this strength number is at least one point too low to make it a, a good weapon to use um, very much. And it's a shame because Provoke down here is really powerful. Gaining the priority target token can keep a monster focused on the tank if they are whipping, um, but the, tr the trouble is here, you can see that it requires a wound. You have to wound. If you've got one strength um, versus eight toughness, 
that's kind of rough. You need a seven plus the wound. And this is where one of the important things within Kingdom Death's mechanics of combat matter. Because if you attack something on a seven plus and you miss, you have missed the opportunity to wound, but that is actually preferable to hitting, drawing the hit location and then failing to wound it. The reason for that is the only punishment for missing is you missed. If you fail to wound, the punishment is you don't get to deal any damage, so that's exactly the same as missing, but now you have to deal with the hit location card, which if it has a failure or a reaction on it, or you've hit the trap, means you are taking extra punishment. So whipping a monster with eight toughness and being like, I need a seven or more to wound this is not a great way to play. It is a good way to put yourself in a losing position. Ideally, you want to be wounding better than like 50% of the time. You want to be wounding like 60% of the time. Um, so one strength weapons are a bit of a rough and difficult spot to use. However, if you have got a Giga Chad, if you have got a survivor who has gained a bunch of strength from strange sources and they've got say plus three, so they themselves and now have four total strength when attacking, which means they wound on a four plus, which is 60% of the time, suddenly, boom, you could use whips. You could have a big beefy boy or girl standing there whipping the lion like they're in a circus and making it come at them. So the rawhide whip does have a couple of applications where it's, it's useful and good. However, there is one other downside to the rawhide whip, and that is this ammonia requirement. You see, it makes logical sense, like thematic sense, that ammonia is used to help like treat the whip into the correct form. Um, but the moment you have ammonia, you can start work on the leather worker. And what that means is you have access to this, which is the hunter whip. It's not that expensive. And the key thing you'll see here is, first of all, it's 10% more accurate and it's got three times the strength. Plus, it has an ability to discard moods, which is actually very rare that you'll find things that archive or discard moods. One of them is an item, um, a instrument, and it's noisy. This is a non-noisy way of getting rid of uh, moods. Uh, and that is that can be absolutely fantastic. The trouble is, it's, it's basically like once you can make a rawhide whip, you can almost certainly make a hunter whip. However, my recommendation is if you want to use the rawhide whip, you're actually going to craft the rawhide whip and the hunter whip and you need a big beefcake to use it. They're going to be your frontline main tank. They're going to have two whips, a shield and at least initially rawhide armor up to leather armor. And they are going to, when there's moods in play, use the Hunter Whip to try and get rid of the mood if it's very dangerous. Otherwise, they are going to use the Rawhide Whip to keep the monster's focus on them. And if their armor all gets destroyed and they're struggling, it means they can pivot to using the Hunter Whip as an alternative weapon and not worry about being the target when your second toughest survivor takes over. So, that's it. That's the Skinnery. That's the lowdown. So we're going to run through at the end, put a nice little bow on it. Here are the summaries for each. Rawhide armor is amazing. You want to craft full sets, at least two full sets, maybe three full sets. Uh, depends how your ammonia progression is going. Rawhide headband is the first in your craft, then the vest, then the gloves, then the boots, and then the pants in that order. Your second set, you can mix it up. If you have a good down facing blue affinity, you can make the vest first and then the gloves and then the headband afterwards. But for the most part, it's easiest to go one, two, three, four, five in that order. Bandages, first lot of bandages, amazing. Craft them, absolutely. Second lot of bandages, okay. Some diminishing returns any more than that and they're not worth crafting and then the rawhide drum is mostly to be avoided there are better instruments if you want to use instruments um, but if you have a survivor with a lot of encourage based synergy you might be able to use a rawhide drum and at a minimum once you have drums innovated and you're going to because drums is really good you can use it in showdowns and it does have some good counterplay against both the Butcher and the Kingsman. Whips, as mentioned, if you've got a big beefy survivor with masses of strength, this is when it gives you an opportunity to use whips. 
or daggers. We'll discuss daggers in the future. Um, but on the whole, these two are situational or meme territory. And that is the skinnery. That's everything that needed. I need to talk about it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will check them occasionally and respond. But overall, this is a 10 out of 10 settlement location. Unless you didn't get any hide at all from the, the prologue white lion, the first white lion you fight, I would always be open in skinnery with one of my three endeavors, uh, definitely. And I will be putting most of my hide into the skinnery early on because armor saves lives. Rawhide armor is currently the best armor set in the game overall given for how long it lasts and how strong the headband is. So until next time, when we'll be talking about the Bonesmith, thank you for listening. I've been Fen, and this is the Skinnery and You.